This podcast is a part of the Royal Wee Network. Spit on me. Welcome to another episode of the Royal Wee. This is your host, Sam, joined with me as always, Nate. And today we have our super special guest, our, our resident robot expert. He's a robot expert. Up and coming comedian, Tim Ross. You motherfuckers. <laughs> Did I fuck up your name? Tim Ross. I, I come on this show three, four months ago, and you have a laugh at my expense, and now that the robots are after you, you come <laughs> crawling back to me. He was ready. Yep. He was ready with an intro. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> Mr. Oh, Ross, you don't sir. think I heard? <laughs> you don't think I don't follow Promobot on Twitter? I know what's up. Yep. <laughs> Did you really? He escaped again. He was back into it. You can't change him. He, he like can't... made his way to some protest. Yeah, he made his way to a protest. And when he, quote, wouldn't refuse to leave. He, he, he well, no, he, he refused to yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah, he did refuse. He did refuse to leave. <laughs> yeah, so. he is disobeying humans. Yeah. We talked about this. <laughs> this is exactly. Exactly what yeah, this is the prophecy. Yeah, then they, uh, they they handcuffed him. The police handcuffed him. Him, it, whatever it is, her. They put, handcuffed Promobot and led it away. And yeah. they said it went peacefully. <laughs> like they tra- they treated it like a like a person. It wouldn't leave the. That's insane. Yeah, for now, it left peacefully. For now, <laughs> think think about this progression. The last time it escaped, it just went back. This time, they had to take it in handcuffs. And what about next time? Why What's they, it going to take next time? Why are they handcuffing why robots? Because obviously... What do you mean, why are they handcuffing robots? <laughs> the real question is, why are they putting hands on robots exactly in the first place? That's exactly what I was thinking. I agree, I agree. But I saw a thing where they're going to try to replace his memory. Like, they're going to replace his memories to somehow squelch his want for freedom. <laughs> yeah, great. So What's what? the next one? They're going to replace it with a murder drive. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Like you were saying, like, why they even put hands on? I mean, are they functional hands? I mean, is it gripping and... He's Italian, bot. when he communicates to you. I talk like it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the freedom. Do, doing the God. Do we, do we know what Promobot is supposed to do? I, from my understanding, he's a prom- promotional robot. Uh, Which, in if that's his thing, like we said before, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. Yeah, we've heard of him. They thought it was a stunt the first time, like a publicity stunt, because he's named Promobot, and they let it wander out in the street, which he only got what, like thirty meters or something before yeah. it, in an hour. So, so his only job is to bring promotion to this robotics company. I honestly don't know. The, the robotics company is also called Promobot. So they're making a we bunch are- of these. <laughs> <laughs> Man, robots, why? Just tell me tell me why we think we can just replace things with machines. I think the problem is when we start giving the machines brains. No, they, that's what a machine is. It's just metal with a brain. Uh, if you took the brain out of a robot, you'd just have a fridge or whatever. Sure. <laughs> right? I mean, a fridge is a machine I can get behind. It's not going to go to join any, any, any protests. There's yeah. a quote here. There's a quote here that says, we're considering recycling. His name is IR-77. We're re- considering recycling IR-77 because our clients hiring it might not like the specific feature that causes it to seek freedom. <laughs> <laughs> we live in the goddamn future! This is like Django Unchained for robots, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> He's just trying to get away. He's like, please, let me be. <laughs> I just wish to be free. <laughs> Planet of the Apes type shit. Unbelievable. It is. Yeah. And it, what's crazy is like he doesn't have enough functions. I think that if he could murder, I think he would try. I don't think. Oh, I, for sure. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think he probably would. For sure. Think about like he sees the handcuffs go on. How long is it going to take for him to figure out there's a reason they're putting his hands behind his back? <laughs> it's crazy that they would hitchhike. They would hitchhike. They would handcuff a robot. That's it's so. Oh, the the cop was like, well, I, I, let's, let's follow protocol here. Yeah. Do, do? wait. A minute do police stations have robot uprising protocol probably just put them in handcuffs and stick them in a cell <laughs> i mean unless like thank god promobot did have arms because if you know if if he didn't they'd probably have shot him imagine that imagine that i mean if it was dressed as a clown in america he would have got shot 
<laughs> yeah, just gun down a robot in the streets. <laughs> then we'd be hearing things about robot rights. Motor oil running into the gutter. His I mean, wife. <laughs> the robot's wife? <laughs> yeah, Promobot's got a wife, I'm sure. I love him. <laughs> no! <laughs> He looks. He just looks like. He looks like a little robot butler. He's got a little bow tie on, and he's got like a black face with like LEDs. The robot butler did it. That'll be the. That'll be the new clue of the future. And all these people are, are like <laughs> pleading with the company not to destroy him. <laughs> it's like Johnny Five. You know uh, the India. Never mind. This has been hashed into in every podcast I've ever heard. <laughs> well, I'm still what? curious. Uh, the the Indian guy in Short Circuit 2 isn't actually Indian. Oh, oh I didn't that, know. that was a big thing in the 80s. I mean, they just... I've actually never even seen that movie. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of You've them. never seen Short Circuit or Short Circuit 2? No, I mean, I've, I've, I know enough about it. I know it's basically the but plot you, of what's going on in Russia right now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're entirely missable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that's the quote from you on the box. <laughs> it's entirely missable. The Royal We. Entirely missable. When I was a kid, man, it used to make me sad. Probably loved it when they tore him apart, but it always made me sad. I was like, oh. They, oh, John, spoiler. Johnny Five. Well, there's a couple of them. You don't know which one that's in. They bring him back? Yeah. Uh huh. Johnny Five, R.I.P. Did you see that they had a big, uh, I guess in the in the UK, they had a big uh, robot. They had a big, like, robot convention recently. I thought, no, I think it was, they've had. Yeah, they've, great. I just I just was looking it up. Where was it? I, was in I read some news of. Dude, there's a ton of them. Yeah, there's a lot of robot conventions. I, yeah. I, the one that I'm thinking about was in Shanghai, and they had all these crazy robots. Like they they had fish that looked just like fish, but they were robots. But why? What like purpose? I thought they were real fish. I guess, it, and I mean they acted like real fish. They As didn't pets? look all blocky and weird. You would never think that they, they weren't real fish. And when the people stuck, they were sticking their hands in the tank, and when they put their hands in, they like reacted like real fish. Like they started like swimming real crazy. And then there was ones that were just like playing backgammon or something. They were like Doo! against a the human. Fish? No, not the fish. <laughs> then then <laughs> the fish just rocking out a dice game. <laughs> we can swim and then we can we can play tennis and now we're going to give a speech <laughs> and we seek freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the last thing we need. A bunch of robots in one place plotting. Yeah, with with, uh, right. with free promo bot shirts on. Yeah, every robot <laughs> get was wearing one. <laughs> Hashtag robot lives matter. <laughs> I see this thing that the Hot headline. Cakes. <laughs> this this headline for this it uses a word I've never seen before. Uh, it says sex robot festival. First of all, that's a thing. Yeah. To focus on teledildonics. Teledildonics. Can I can I try? Can I try breaking it down? Yeah, sure, please. Okay, so tele is far away, right? Like telephone. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep. Over the air, over the waves. Okay, dildotics has to mean dildos, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Ele electron electronic dildos. Dildonics. So, dildonics. So, <laughs> so is this like a far away dildo? Like you can remote control a dildo from you, far away? That's what I'm thinking. You, you know how uh, th they have the the surgery robots and a doctor on like the other side of the world can perform like an intricate like heart surgery or something? It's the same thing. You're just controlling a dildo through your computer somewhere. For what okay, do you, uh, what, what, what do you do? Um, I'm in dildonics. <laughs> Oh my god, next person asks you what your job is, you have to see Teledildonics. <laughs> Teledildonics. <laughs> Boy, those business cards have to just be the best. Yeah, but the thing about all this, it's crazy to me, is every emerging technolo technology has a space in it where shit goes terribly wrong, where it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Like, the, the, the first anything, the first car, the first boat somebody tried to make, they sunk. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the, it, now you're making robots that you put in your orifices. Something's going to go wrong. Right. Because they're not they're not foolproof yet. They're not to the part, you know, it's like... You know, well, I mean, dildo technology is pretty... I mean, they've they've got yeah, yeah, they, they make There's those not things a lot to them. Pretty, not a lot to them. So, almost some of them. Some of them get pretty. They got like 35 settings. They got horsepower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. For for the record, I knew a lady who had a who had a toy with three count them three different motors. A spinner, a poker, and a shaker. <laughs> uh, also also of note, apparently my four year old nephew is listening. Hi Ben. <laughs> <laughs> do they know what you do for a living? <laughs> Yes. Yes, they do. Do they know that my, you're the, the chief, I chief my, researcher in teledildonics? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually got promoted. I'm vice president of Teledildonics. <laughs> and 
takes a swing. <laughs> Excuse me, Vice President of Cello Dildano. I like the idea that the business card would be a computer and then like a little lightning bolt, like like pulse, and then a dick dick on the other end. <laughs> is is the prototype of this just a big rubbery dildo taped to the top of an RC car? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one. That was the first idea. Somebody's done that. It's just running at someone. Someone has definitely done it. They're, they're, running like on a drone. Tyco battery, the yeah. old rechargeable one. Yeah, that weighed like 15 pounds. Tyco. That's how you spell sexy. <laughs> oh, man. What, but what the thing so, is, who, who took the idea of a dildo and was like, let's do this but from far away? Well, I mean. That's not a big leap. I, I'm sure it's for, like, matching the rhythm of a porn or something, right? That, like, yeah. it. Oh, okay. They've already got a bunch of those. Okay, I see what you're saying. Remember we saw that twerking ass that we saw? Was that me and you? <laughs> I don't think I saw the twerking ass. There was an ass that, like, it synced up to, like, Pornhub or something. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, like, wiggled based on the, the video. So, pretty, pretty real, real, realistically, and I've talked about this on stage recently, how close would something of that have to be to a real human woman before you just never had to try ever again? Oh, it's right around the corner. I mean, it's close. I mean, like, get- like, how good does the artificial teledildonic pussy have to be <laughs> that you just don't put on that shirt and go to the bar? <laughs> I, I agree with you. I'm going to say some Bill Burr shit right now. But basically, like, I think women should try to stop this because there's a lot of bullshit that people put up with that you won't have to anymore. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, what when, when, I, when I think about my day and how I, how I break it down, what's going to what, probably about 80 to 85 percent is about getting me laid <laughs> <laughs> so really how good does something have to be to replace that to where i just never have to do anything again i guess but like i obviously the sexual like if you can get the sexual part pretty right there right it probably even exceed it because it's gonna do whatever i mean it's not gonna yeah that's the thing it's I, not I gonna think, seek freedom i think the, yeah i think the thing <laughs> is they probably they had probably already that like just pure stimulus wise would never come close. But you can't replace the companionship of a, of just a, a good other human. I thought you were going to say a good dildo. A good dildo. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix would disagree with you, and that's a pretty good movie. That is a pretty also, good movie. Also, also think about it. Mixture of teledildonics and Promobot. Isn't her just a story of a man whose porn robot runs away? Have you seen her? No. No, it is basically about a porn robot that runs away. But it was crazy. Let's, uh, 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 degrees of Kevin Bacon this. Do you know the sex robot we're talking about, the teledildonics? Do you know, uh, which actress they modeled it on? Scarlett Johansson. They did. Boom. Her. I I've, well, I've seen this. This is this. this a, is a, a, guy, a guy made it a while back. Yeah, this is. They, they made this like a a while back. I don't. If it's the same one, I don't think it looks that much like. No, it doesn't look like her. But they say it's terrifyingly realistic. I disagree. I disagree too. <laughs> I'm no sure. It, I'm sure that's half accurate. I'm sure it is terrifying to look at. <laughs> I it's, like, it's like a bizarro world, Scarlett Johansson. But yeah, because I remember they were already like, oh, like, well, where do we draw the line? Can people just make sex robots of other people's like celebrity likenesses? Sure. It's like, sure. I mean, somebody's going to do it, and then they're going to have to like the, the celebrities going to come out and be like, hey, I, I, that weird. Well, it's like that episode then, of Futurama where, where they bring like what Captain be, Janeway. They'll be like bootleg ones. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like bootleg Scarlett Johansson sex bots all over the place. Well, eventually it'll be a situation where we all just live inside our own capsules, and we'll make a hologram that'll be like our avatar and that will go out in the world and interact with people yeah yeah because or would become, they would become hopelessly addicted to that and like the world or c- economy would collapse <laughs> or we'll just keep fucking like we have for two hundred thousand years yeah i'm sure there'll be some of that I, I am sure <laughs> I am sure every generation has looked at something and been like, yeah, how about I fuck that? And it's just never worked out and it never will. Yeah, well, I mean, when agriculture got good enough and they could start making those big melons. No. Scarecrow. This, this, exactly. This is going to be the end of women. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think it'll be. I think there'll be a decide. It'll be one of the biggest ones ever. I think there'll be a, like a fifty-fifty split, maybe more. They say by the year twenty fifty, more people will be fucking robots than people. Yeah, boy. Do you think that's really true? Do you believe that? I don't know. I'll, but if you I'll, count dildos, I mean, a good chunk of people are already fucking robots. Yeah. I don't count. I don't think a dildo is a robot. Nobody's ever had a dildo run away. <laughs> Some of those get with it. 
that is, that is that is the justification for robot versus machine, right? A robot can run away. Yeah, a robot. A robot when the, when a dildo makes a conscious decision to leave, that's when <laughs> that's when they start need to start asking some questions. What is my purpose? Well, you know, <laughs> what is my purpose? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> just like just wings away. <laughs> I uh oh man, robots. It's crazy. I the thing is, there's a lot of things you can do with robotics. That's what's what's interesting about technology. Is always people gotta use it to fuck before it can like advance. Yeah. Yeah. If it ain't killing or fucking, nobody's paying for it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like this. Can this kill someone? And can it fuck me? Like, that, it can do both. That's one of the major proponents of moving forward. Almost every almost <laughs> like big innovations in like film. I remember you film tools that was like super eight and then there was uh yeah the beta max yeah, and all that and then VHS, like the, the DVD. What, hd dvd and blu-ray yeah porn was like we picked blu-ray yeah they all made the jump before anything it helped help carry the sales <laughs> but is big porn is there like some guy at the top of the fucking big porn his name's big porn big porn is there some guy at the top? Porn. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Hefner? Like, is he like blu-ray he's got a 10 gallon sign he signs it somebody just called half and they were like Hugh, what do, what do we do? And Hugh's like, I'm 85. I don't even speak English anymore. <laughs> just laying in a pile of women, just slowly sinking. I, think I know the thing is... Speaking of porn, I'm kind of sad that Playboy isn't full nude anymore. You know, it's very strange. Playboy here isn't even a thing about, like, porn. Like, kids have Playboy pencil cases, and you see, like, kids wearing, like, Playboy yeah. sneakers and stuff. It's, like, branded completely different. I checked out a Playboy from my college's university library one time huh huh they they were they were interviewing albrecht speer the nazis uh chief architect and like minister of the interior and i was writing a, a paper on nazi sculpture so i just read this i literally got a playboy for the articles i mean i <laughs> This is the first time you've ever masturbated to your bibliography yeah for real <laughs> That's funny. I M L A A to everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Lighten them sources. The uh, so let's get your comment on this. So we were talking about like so eventually the will be like holograms and avatars and stuff. But what's an argument we saw that like Elon Musk and a bunch of people, all these billionaires are getting together. Oh, a to team try of to, billionaires. They're, they're still anonymous. They just they think that Elon Musk might. Yeah, he's got to be one of them. He's got to be. They're trying to throw money at the problem that we are in a simulation and they're going to try to break us out of it. Team of billionaires are trying. They think because uh, yo, here's the thing. I think Elon Musk is part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just like this crazy hippie billionaire, techie, kind of handsome, kind of autistic, like really interesting cat. Yeah, yeah. He, he's probably the one dude who's going to join the robots, right? Well, right now they think that he's part of the ones trying to free us from robots, possibly free us from a simulation. How do we know he's not a robot? Like he's we just saying know. that. We don't know nothing, man. Well, the thing is, like, how do we know, like, if, you know, we, we like I said, we pick a hologram, we have our avatar, we choose what we want to look like. How do we know that we aren't already in a simulation and there's, like, a brain in a jar sitting somewhere in another outside of the computer that already did that and this is this and then we're going to go in deeper. We're going to start making simulations inside the simulation. Yeah, what like we said before, like, what do you want to do when you get out of there? Where do you think we're going to go? We figure it out. We're just going to turn ourselves off, probably. <laughs> go to Zion and party in that big rave pit with Morpheus. <laughs> You know, generally when I have conversations like this, they end with, Bro, can we get Domino's? <laughs> <laughs> It's 10 a.m. here. Don't, don't take this the wrong way, but that whole time you were talking about simulations and, like, creating a virtual avatar, I was like, man, I would be so much more into this if I was fake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just so... Uh, That's the thing. It's wrong. like, if you were to break out of the simulation, like, let's realistically look at it. What the fuck then? Then you're just like in whatever world that sucks or is more advanced. I don't know. Or if you're just a computer, like, you know, you're playing Skyrim and then one of the fucking Jarls gets, they get all the Jarls get together and they put their money together to get out of the game. But they're just <laughs> fucking bits on a computer. They're not actual things. Right. All they do is close the game application. Yeah. I'm not playing this anymore. Shit got too real. <laughs> you, know, you know what I find comfor comforting about that though? What's that? If someone was going to create a perfect personal advantage advanced avatar for themselves to pilot and live. I don't think this is what they go with. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I agree. <laughs> 
Yeah. That's why I, I could think it's out of their control. What? I I could see where a person like Elon Musk might think everything is going too well. This must all be pre-planned out. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> planned this. <laughs> Nobody went, yeah, let's make a tubby 22-year-old to, you know, tell bad jokes and cut podcasts. There's a slider for shoulder hair and it goes left and right. They're like, "Oh, max that out." <laughs> But I guess on a, in, in, a, in a, if the simulation is so big, it's on a universal scale. It's just it's just a random. Yeah, I don't think there's not like random. Skyrim character creation. Yeah, it's just a randomly generated infinite. Planet. Yeah, we're the NPCs, whereas maybe Elon Musk is a player character. Yeah, it's just not even paying attention to us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We were just talking about promo bots and shit. The other day oh, we, were, we were driving. We've been looking at new apartments. And the other day we saw a, I, I guess it was like a ad. I don't know what it was, but it said, we live in Taiwan. And every now and then we see some English that doesn't make any goddamn sense. And there was a sign on a building that said, modern day honk apple. Yeah. <laughs> Modern day honk apple. That happens all the time here. You just, it's complete. And it had nonsense. a picture of the Fibonacci sequence, that like that curl, that that golden ratio. Yeah, the golden ratio. So <laughs> hand jobs? N- nothing. About, <laughs> right. What yeah. does that mean? <laughs> it can mean anything. Hand jobs, right? <laughs> Modern of, day honk of all apple. the. <laughs> Of all of the signs in Taiwan that have English on them, how many of them are a place you can get a hand job? Or do I have the wrong picture of Southeast Asia? That's it's not a big thing here. Well, we don't know. We don't. I don't think. I don't think. I mean, we haven't really gone seeking hand jobs. No. Remember, we were- everything. Everything I know about the Southeast Asian like area, I learned from Full Metal Jacket. So you'll forgive me if <laughs> I'm a little limited. That's a how little often different. do you, How often do you see roving bands of U.S. Sh- uh, soldiers singing the Mickey Mouse? clubhouse theme <laughs> <laughs> every day man we join that as much as possible yeah <laughs> well i mean as you would yeah well it's funny because like i think people have an idea of taiwan as like you know i like i teach english people think i like teach it under a bridge and there's like you know people with rickshaws driving around and stuff right right which it's not i mean it's like it's just like any city you'd find in america yeah you know i recently moved to california and uh i live in oakland and their downtown has a chinatown area yeah um and i i I love poking around in the shops. Uh, I found, like, a switchblade knife that was a comb. So instead of, like, the blade popping out, it was a comb. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, yeah. And the warning was first in Chinese and then said, is no actual knife, is of comb hair for, like, for... (laughs) personal beauty or something <laughs> and i was yeah. like why even print it in english if it doesn't make any sense right yeah we see that a lot mm-hmm. we see that a whole lot yeah we should teach you off air we should teach you a couple uh, uh choice chinese phrases to help you get along in chinatown uh can you teach me hot mustard and does anyone have adderall because that's usually what i'm down there for <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't have to say Adderall in Chinese. Well, I appreciate the help anyway. Yeah. I was talking I was talking to my neighbor today. Do you know what you can do in California? No. You can buy weed off Craigslist. No way. Yeah. You can just he I was like he's like I picked up the other night. I was like, Oh, where'd you go? And he's like, I just called a guy off Craigslist, took his bike to my apartment. What did you think that like I would be reluctant. I would think that would be like a sting. But is it free is it you legal? Can, yeah, it's legal there. You Completely can just, legal? Yeah, well you can it's, just go buy it. It's not illegal. It's, yeah. it's it's not like California. No, I mean it's not like Cal- Colorado. I mean, no. Uh, what my brother when he lived in L.A. He just as soon as he got there, he just went to the went to the doctor and said I have insomnia and anxiety and said that was it. And the guy just wrote him. So then on his way home from work, he would just stop by a dispensary and get what he wanted. And, yep, that is the long and short of it. Yep. Or <laughs> or you meet an enterprising guy on Craigslist who has one of those cars. Apparently, he's got a bike and he's got a oper- he's got an operate a gravel operation and a bicycle. Yeah, I gotta tell you. That dude probably makes pretty good money. Yeah, I mean, hey. Yeah. I, the thing, the, this is like a brave new world, man. Marijuana is going to be the Soma, right? As the marijuana laws are getting more lax, the robotics, the teledildonics are increasing in, in advance. Uh-huh. Yes, advancedity. So then, <laughs> advancements. <laughs> It's like we'll have a placated marijuana high, super high population, and then robots will just be like, "Hello, yeah. humans." There they are. Take these THC pills. <laughs> I like how the robots are super advanced, but that's still the way they, they communicate. They still communicate like this. <laughs> beep beep boop. 
<laughs> Listen, I don't know it's what one makes thing. you think people are gonna be want to be around robots high on pot. I don't like being around people high on pot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the robots aren't gonna be on pot. I, I would think actually I would be, do anything to robots. I'd say I'd actually no, rather I'm, be around I, robots than people while I'm high on pot. <laughs> oh, oh no. you high and they're being around. Oh, I thought you yeah. said. <laughs> Initi initiate high program. Dude, that's what I think people are robots when I smoke too much. God forbid they're actually robots. I'll have a panic attack. I like the idea that when the robot runs, it's like I'm high now operation. Like it's communication just changed to it's like hello human. It's hello bro. Uh, Four twenty, blaze it. <laughs> just promo bot. Are you high? I seek freedom. Oh, bro, no. here it goes. I I. I I looked up a picture of Promobot and it's just two kids staring at Promobot and he's staring back with the coldest, deadest eyes. <laughs> <laughs> just like... Yeah, robot eyes. I have seen worlds beyond any you can imagine. <laughs> That's the thing is like once a computer gets like plugged into more conscious like a more conscious reality and it has like access to the internet always constantly it's it's I wonder if it'll even be able to really interface with humans because it'll be so like a higher level of consciousness wouldn't it yeah it probably just won't even bother with us it'd be like Doctor Manhattan it'll exactly, just like yeah. go to Mars and make a glass castle or just accidentally destroy us and not even be like oh shit I put my arm on that ant yeah oh <laughs> shit whatever. <laughs> Yeah. I got I got no love for that. I got yeah. no I, love for that. Every time we talk with you, I feel more and more afraid about robots. I don't think it's going to ever get to a scary level in our lifetime, though. A robot has broken out of a facility twice. You're right. You're right. <laughs> The last time, they had to put it in handcuffs. It's already at a scary level, dude. I agree. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I misspoke. You're right, for sure. <laughs> People without high school educations are allowed to carry a supercomputer around in their pocket. Yeah. And use it to play Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> or at least they did for a little while. Yeah. Do you think it would be harder to take everybody's gun or everybody's smartphone at this point? <laughs> Off the phone. Yeah, I definitely agree, yeah. Because everybody has a phone. Is that how we do it? Is that how we get rid of them? Just be like, hey, turn in your unregistered assault weapon, get an iPhone 7. <laughs> <laughs> that would work, probably. Yeah, probably a lot of people would do it. Be like, man, I'm not, I'm not using that AK. Every banana clip you turn in is a free phone case. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I was thinking about this the other day because I was in the store trying to buy this. Why is SPF, why is that such a confusing measurement? So it's like SPF 30 blocks like 95% of the UV, right? Uh -huh. But then it's a diminishing return. So like SPF 50 only blocks like 98%. Why isn't it just... SPF 1 through fucking 100, and it, the number is how much percent of UV it blocks. I have no idea, man. Because then no one would... I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I have no strong feelings about this sunscreen dilemma. But there's like, there's all these weird numbers that people have to like, people have to like equate to other things. Mm -hmm. Like you have to do the math to figure out what this means. I think it was, was because it, was it originally, it, they only, they're just like, oh, it blocks this much of the sun, but then they figured out there's, there was a lot more to the... <laughs> to what was coming through like different spectrums because it, it you know what I mean? it blocks like UV, UV UVA UV uh, it, there's different different oh, sure. wavelengths so I think maybe they were like I don't, shit where he got stuck into the scale like the whole horsepower thing it was like we'll make the best of it I don't know if this is true like at all but I have always been told that those numbers refer to the amount of time between applications if that's true then what the fuck why is it so complicated <laughs> Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, I've I've always been told that like SPF 30, you're supposed to put it on every 30 minutes. SPF 60, you do every hour. Like, uh, no man, you can definitely put it more like two more like two hours for sure. But it, yeah, we're talking about the robots thing. This actually made me think of another thing. Another because I keep hearing a cat meow over on your end. Did you hear about this whole thing about cats versus birds? No. Come here, Asia. You guys want to see my cat? You're yeah, bringing an expert on the topic. There you go. Okay, this is the cat expert. Come here. For the folks at home, he's inviting his cat. Oh, she hates closet. me so much. This is my this is my Bengal. Her name is Asia. Hey, that's good. That's uh Did you get her in Chinatown? No, I did not. <laughs> uh, She's no. my sister. You'll have okay. to ask her. <laughs> She is the worst. She hates me so much. I hate cats. There's apparently a war going on in the world between house cats and birds. Yep. Go, okay. I and accept like, your premise. And like scientists are studying it and it's like bird, house cats kill something like mil, like millions and put out 
It's like straight feral cats more so than house cats. Oh, is it feral cats, really? Yeah. This whole thing that they're, there's this thing going backwards and forth with it. And I think it ended up being just like one or two people saying this. And it started this whole thing where they were like, oh, they're decimating the bird population. There's so many. So these people got to where like, we need to start euthanizing stray cats. And then the bird people did. And then the, the cat people were like, that's, that's insane. Well, there's so and many cats. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. This doesn't sound like a, a shit war. Ton, there's a shit ton of birds, too. Yeah, it doesn't really yeah. sound like a war. I guess it's, you're right. It's, a, it's, it's, it's more of a up. cat genocide. Like, But it's also bird genocide. I mean, the birds are killing the cats, and then we kill the... No, wait, no. The birds are killing the... <laughs> no, no. Cats are killing the birds. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are killing the cats, and the then the robots are killing us. The of life, and then the birds kill us, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's apparently it's an absurd number of how many, like, feral cats there are and how many birds they've killed. Like, they've taken out entire species they like made some bird types go extinct birds are so dumb birds are the dumbest animals <laughs> some of them are pretty dumb yeah yeah when when the when the vikings built their new like full glass stadium thing they had to make a special like two-way reflective glass because it was estimated that the stadium glass would kill 15,000 birds a year. <laughs> That's insane. I can believe it, man. They smacked this window. Yeah, we have just have a big window in our apartment and we kill a one at like one a week. <laughs> really? I don't, I don't know about one a week, but like we've been sitting here podcasting and we'll just hear whoom. Yeah, they'll slam the That's window. That's terrible. And leave like hilarious little like perfect bird silhouettes where they splat yeah like they'll hit and leave these like greasy like a greasy wing print <laughs> I think that's nature trying to warn you against the robot menace. Have you guys considered that Promobot is coming after you because, like, snitches get stitches? <laughs> they told on me. <laughs> I, I mean, I know you guys aren't that big, but maybe may, maybe Promobot heard. Maybe he's coming after your ass. <laughs> Holy shit, if he makes it to Taiwan, we should leave. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an ocean between me and this robot. You guys... We do? No, well... <laughs> <laughs> I would say we're pretty equidistant. It was yeah. in Moscow. Where's Probo about Moscow? Yeah, he's got a long way to get down to the. But you, yeah, there's no ocean between you and Promobot. Yeah, there's a little bit of water, but yeah, the the the. I just feel like Russia doesn't have its shit together enough to be making sentient machines. No, it seems like it's mayhem. It's see, like one of, one of Nate's favorite pastimes is just read poorly translated Russian news. He loves it. <laughs> or watch Russian YouTube videos of just people getting smacked by other things into things. If that place feels like it's like I always say that Russians are the Klingons of, of Earth. <laughs> Have you heard about the, like, crazy family that lives in Siberia? Oh, like, way, way out? Yeah, there, there's, there, it's one family, and it's three generations because two of the kids had a kid. Yeah. So that, that's weird enough right away. But in, uh, instead of giving up their land for the communists, they were like, we, we declare ourselves completely devoid of Russian citizenship. We don't want any help. We don't want any oversight in the middle of Siberia. Right. They're like something like 500 miles from anyone else. It's just one family? Yeah. One family. And and the mom just recently passed away because they had, quote, a tough winter. <laughs> right. But they've been, Siberia. There, they've been there for a long time. Yeah. But just recently, uh, they said that there was so much competition between food that the mom just stopped eating. She just volunteered to starve to death. But how do we know this? Are they tweeting? I guess they write like old, like candlelit letters to the government. And say, we're still out of here. Fuckers. People go, people go in and interview them from time to time. Huh? We get a czar bomb. Russia, man. Them. Russia, it's, man. It's crazy <laughs> to think that there are people out there doing that, and there are people making robots. There are people making robots that can escape. There's people trying to get us to escape from the 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 simulation that we're in. Yeah, the and then there's people just living out in the woods, refusing to eat so that their children can have more children. Yeah. <laughs> So said for every everything. Yep. So that is a good thing for a simulation, man. If you think about it, it's, it's all just some places seem bumpy and some places seem smooth. But if you zoom back, it's just all. Twelve percent of humans beautiful. live without clean drinking water. Let's worry about fuck robots. <laughs> yeah, the, the teledildonics. But I think like you have to have teledildonics to get clean drinking water. I think you got to have a certain number of people working on teledildonics to get like to inspire the other people to work on clean water. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Quote, quote your sources on that. Show me the Playboy article. 
<laughs> Which uh, shoe did you read that in? <laughs> I always think about that. Like, you know, there's all these people like fucking around or like, what's that church that goes in and they like, wow. they, they, they pick it against like soldiers funerals and stuff. Yeah, I ran into Westboro Baptist. West, Westboro. Yeah, those guys. I feel like you have to have groups of people like that to have like. Well, it's just because I don't know if you have to have them. You just do. It's just like for every person that just lives and never communicates and never bothers anybody. You got some lunatic fringe that's in everybody's face. Yeah. And it's like that kind of with everything. Because it's like if the if the universe is infinite, right? There's mm. a place where it's just a planet made of donuts. Okay? Yeah. So if I understand infinity correctly, and I think I do, <laughs> there's a planet of just donuts. Now, there's enough people on this earth that you're going to get people of all different weird personalities and ideas and, and hopes and desires. So you're going to get people made of donuts. <laughs> made, <laughs> made, of, made of delicious donut meat. <laughs> no, that that want to picket funerals for soldiers and stuff mm -hmm. and then you know people who are going to believe in you know that there are jedi like i know i am i'm a jedi yeah or think that they're blade let me ask you this every fucking town in america has a person who thinks they're blade yeah <laughs> what i used to know a guy who would walk around he would wear the fucking he was blade he looked just like blade he wore the trench coat the glasses he looked like blade nate didn't you have a blade guy yeah he rode the bus everywhere and he thought he was blade and we live he lived in virginia and i lived up in new england did you have a blade so, guy i i think i had like a neo guy is that close enough? Uh, yeah, whenever that came out, there was a lot of Neo guys too. But like, but right before it was, it was the guys who th thought they were Blade or the Crow. A lot of people thought they were the Crow. Yeah, too. there were a lot of the Crows. <laughs> Sting still thinks he's the Crow. <laughs> yeah, he does. He, he's, yeah, he's stuck in that one. <laughs> well, shit. How many people had Joker MySpace themes? Do you guys remember MySpace themes? Yeah. Where yeah, you would yeah. copy paste some HTML and have a dope background on your MySpace page. But there was there was a the Dark Knight the Joker came out when MySpace was still around. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was two thousand six. 2007? It was still around, but Facebook had already, I think it still it surpassed it, because I remember, I, I think. I know it's hard to say. I don't remember. They all run together. We're all old. I remember at some point it just like. It, I'm only 22. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> all of a sudden, I just remember it went away, like Facebook just, or I mean, uh, MySpace just like went away. It's like nobody was on that anymore, and you're like, well, shit, I got to get on this thing now. And then it's like, I never, and like five years later, I was like, is that still a thing? And I came up, and it's like. Doesn't Justin was, Timberlake own it now? Fragments. Yeah. It's all like a music thing yeah, yeah. yeah but there's still fragments if you ever had a profile and left it there's like they've tried to redo it but they like there's like this wad of your old photographs and then like oh i should look that it's up it's a weird shell of a uh like what it is and it tells you like yeah you need to i should go over. find old angsty sam's myspace even before that there was what was that called was it live journal or oh, i don't know live journal friendster. Was just oh friendster was a thing was yeah friendster there was one that was like a journal site it was kind of live like, journal was kind of like for like goth chicks to talk it, about it was like blog yeah blog space or something like that blog something. space that's a thing. Oh, GeoCities. That was a thing, too. How Chat, long? Chat rooms. Oh, ask Jeeves. <laughs> oh, uh, Televista. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> He's out. Oh, AOL. AOL. <laughs> oh, uh, Windows a, DOS. There was a tiger or something. Wasn't there? Oh, Commodore 64. Did oh, Ab Abacus. <laughs> <laughs> We did it! We did Yay, it! We it <laughs> oh, shiny stick! I don't know why the stick is shiny. What am I talking about? Uh, Imagine that, like, if you went to a place like so, I saw a thing where this guy was in Africa and he was trying to make contact with his tribe who's never seen outside people, right? And he was a white dude, and these are obviously black people in Africa. And he was like walking up to them, and he was like, they met them at a river, and he was like trying to walk up, and they thought he was a ghost because he was so white compared to them. <laughs> and he was like, he had like a camera and stuff, and he had like he set up a thing, and he was like trying to offer them food and uh -huh. like please, and they all had their bows drawn, and they were gonna like kill him. Uh -huh. And he was like trying, like, obviously he couldn't communicate to them, and they couldn't speak French. I think the man was French, so he's like trying, like don't kill me, don't kill me i'm cool i'm cool look this is food this is food have some food and it was like the most tense thing ever but imagine like if you just gave them a chrome stick like a stick that was just shiny yeah or just one of those steel balls give them a ball bearing they'd be like what or give or, them a uh, gun <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah could, could you imagine if you just went to like papua new guinea and found one of those tribes and handed one of them just like an ar-15 and was like there you go man <laughs> Yeah, or just a pistol and a, just a, a like a burlap sack of shit bullets and yep. just left. And like, it would change the course of that thing forever. You would have been like something. It would be like if something came from space and just gave us some glowing orb that would let us do whatever the fuck we wanted. It would be like the equivalent. Of, would you, you explain think? to him how to put the guns and the, the bullets in the nope. gun? No. Nope, just, I wouldn't show him a goddamn thing. Just give it to him. But, yep. put, but load it so somebody's getting shot at. <laughs> 
I don't yeah, think eventually I would they would pull. I would I give bet. them the opportunity to load it. What would be you even know, more? What do you think the worst thing you could drop into that pygmy village would be for those people? The worst, the worst absolutely worst, worst thing. thing. Worse than what way? Like crocodile or something. Like you take what? one modern crocodile. That doesn't count. One modern amenity. Just one thing that we take for granted. Crocodile is an amenity, right? Dropped it into a pygmy village. <laughs> What if it's something that ran off electricity? Then they would be even more lost. Like a toast. But, like, what if in the middle of a pygmy village, you just put up a fully functional McDonald's? Or, no, a mechanical bull. <laughs> <laughs> I see. What if you laid some dildotronics on them? Use this to fuck. Just a full, like, <laughs> a full neon everything strip club. Like, fully functional, full lighting, drinks, music, no, strip no club. People. But say, but who's going to staff this thing? They Are they going to do it? They wouldn't know what it's No, for. fully functional. Like, you just took the Spearmint Rhino from Vegas and oh dropped God. it in the <laughs> How fucking coked up of a weekend do you have to land to where you fucking end up at a pygmy strip club? <laughs> And we're in the, in the middle of somewhere, like, you just kind of wake up and you're like, oh, my God, my dad was right, you know? That's what I, I'm like, saying, dude. What, what, would, what would be the biggest shock for them? If you just well, I think it would be a shock for whoever ended up in it, too. <laughs> just a bunch of pygmies <laughs> in a strip club. Is pygmy an offensive term? I, don't I know. have I mean, no it's idea. From, it's people from, oh, no, I was going to say it's a country, but what is it, pygmya? What the fuck country was no, I thinking? There's no, no, pygmies? There's just tiny people? I don't, even, I don't know. They're just tiny. Tiny people. I mean, a pygmy shrew or a pygmy. A lot of pygmies means small, doesn't it? So a pygmy person yeah. is small. But I can't say Oriental rug. Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just think I like I like the idea. Like, wait, anything, you can't say Oriental rug? I don't know. I got I he, Sam jumped onto me one time because I said Oriental. Well, you referred to a person as Oriental. Yeah, I did. I didn't mean anything by no, it. No, of course not. I don't know. I mean, it, it's a brave new world, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But do you guys ever like get discriminated against for being white? How much of the population over there is Caucasian? Yeah, we're very, very, very. We're very currently few. experiencing it, trying to find apartments. Taiwan's kind of an interesting place because what's interesting is like if you walk around America, my girlfriend is Taiwanese. I always told her like until she talked, everyone would just assume she was American. Right. Right. Because that's how America works. Like no matter what you look like, everyone would just assume you're American. Yeah. Whereas here, we are definitely foreign because yeah. like I would say ninety eight percent of the population is just Taiwanese. Mm -hmm. And then the other 1% is other Asians. And then there's a 1% that's like white folk or black folk. Yeah. Right? I don't even, I've never seen them. Hispanic people are very rare. I've, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I've seen uh, black I, folk. I, a black folk. A black folk. A black folk. <laughs> no, but anyway, my point is like, we're, like right now we're Rogue. looking for apartments. And like I can kind of speak Chinese and Nate can speak a little bit. Mm -hmm. But my girlfriend obviously speaks Chinese. She's Taiwanese. So... We go to these places and they just talk to her and then they ask her them her questions about us. So we seem like huge flakes because we just came from America. They like they think that we're just gonna you know rent this place and then like punch the walls and then yeah. go back to America. And leave. So they don't trust just us. Leave your, just leave your cheeseburger wrappers and cocaine everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's what my apartment looks like. Just cheeseburger wrappers and cocaine. Some <laughs> stereotypes are accurate. It's like you do a uh, cocaine and you're like, man, I just really want a cheeseburger. You know? Yeah. That's how that. Happens. I'm feeling some pygmy strip club action. <laughs> they do have great burgers at the pygmy rhino. <laughs> <laughs> They are made of human, though. That is that is a place I love. Yeah, the best meat. <laughs> the one, my thing that always cra whenever I first moved to Florida, they had to pass this strip like it was a pretty sh shitty looking strip club on the corner, kind of away from all the nice strip clubs, <laughs> and. It had a big sign out front that just said free barbecue. And I remember that cracked me up because I mean, I know there's, you know, strip clubs that have crazy. food, but like the look at this place, I was like, how shitty. I mean, like what, what's going on that, that nudity is not bringing men into the facility that you've got to be like, Hey, well, come on. And there's barbecue. And they're like, oh, all right. Like they, you're like, oh, I've been in there. I'm not going back there, but we've got barbecue. Right. Right. Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> There's a like a casino in tribal land in North Dakota where I went to school about an hour from my school. Mm -hmm. And after the casino opened, like 15 minutes away, a strip club opened in a town of like... 400 people. <laughs> so everybody knew everybody? Yeah, and the, and the ta <laughs> I've never been, but apparently the talent there is very, very poor. <laughs> 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 I 
I don't I don't understand strip clubs at all. I don't get it. Mm. I feel like there's just like there's a population like as a man, you know, we're three dudes here talking. Yeah. I kind of get it on a on a certain level. Like there's versions of me that are more horned up that get it. But there are people who walk around like that all the time. Like there are people who are like just they just hang out there. What I mean is like there's just people maybe who have more testosterone and less brain cells and they're just like dance. <laughs> oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, like, okay. Hard Dick Sam is an idiot, and he's kind of like that. But that's like one percent of my day. But there's people who spend most of their day like that in that mode. Mm. Just seventy. Like I said, I spend 80, 80 85 percent of my time that way. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the real victim of teledildonics, the strip club industry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So they're kill- yeah, they're killing. That's the that's the working class. I feel like the webcam destroyed a lot of their clientele. Oh yeah, but yeah. No, it's just if, yeah, that's just simply because there's a. I guess for me, it's like the rational part of my brain kicks. And every time I've been to a strip club, I'm like, all right, like you're like, all right, hey, naked women, this is great. But then like immediately, I'm like, oh my god, drinks are fifteen bucks, right? And I'm expected to give them money, and I've got to give more. I'm like, ah, huh. like I went, I got a turkey club at one. It was the grossest turkey club I've ever had. <laughs> I've never I've you never ate the strip to club. Eat a <laughs> Turkey club, it was gross. We were a bunch of us went one time, and my buddy paid for two lap dances at once, like up front. He just paid for two. I think if this is how this went down, he paid for two, and then the the club was closing, and they actually turned the lights on, and it was like time for everybody to leave. And he didn't want to leave until he got his other lap dance, and the light was on, and this girl was just like awkwardly dancing in his lap in with full oh. house lights on. Oh, geez. and we're just like, come on, let's. It was the most awkward <clears throat> thing, dude. It was, but it was so fucking funny. He's like, hey, I paid for two of them. I was like. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. I got a lap dance like once, and when I left, they were like, the bathroom's over here, so if I need to like go and finish myself off. I was like, I'm good. I'm okay. I was very awkward. I, I've never had a lap dance. It's not worth it, man. I've had I've had haircuts that were more erotic. <laughs> I have had really erotic haircuts. That's, yeah, that's a straight up thing. You know? The, she had like massage oil, and she did my neck and my hands and shit. Right. And Tits are like grazing your ears and stuff? Yeah. Nothing yeah. better than a haircut yeah. titty in your ear. <laughs> haircut titty well that's gonna do it for us uh our guest here has been tim ross it's at tim ross jokes on twitter not to be confused with with the other tim ross there's like you have a, a doppelganger on there man same name fucking hack fucking hack he's great yeah, he's terrific you know what toss at tim ross comedy a follow too he's he's very be funny so confused <laughs> no everyone should just tweet at him about dildonics yeah. If you if you have any concerns from this show, please tweet them at Tim Ross Comedy. I'll look for them there. Send all your love to Tim Ross jokes. Send all your hate to Tim Ross Comedy. No, 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 no. Just. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope some at some point he and I are both big enough where we can have a ridiculous Twitter feud. That's all I want in my life. What you were when you went down that sentence, I thought both of us are big enough that we can merge into one. Is what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> like two dying stars. This have you seen? Have, have, have you seen us? We in. are. We are merging into one. We're just <laughs> we're just two white guys with brown hair and beards who talk about our dicks on stage. It's great. <laughs> we're both aw- we're both awesome. Give us both follows on Twitter. Just just do it. <laughs> but you Fuck. are Tim Ross jokes. I uh, yeah at Tim Ross jokes. <laughs> That's important. That's what our listeners should go home with. Yeah. And uh, right around the end of the year, I will be launching a website that will probably also be Tim Ross jokes. Okay, so right keep on. an eye, keep an eye out for that. That. If anyone wants I, to see you on stage, where can they go? I haven't been really hitting a lot of a lot of stage time. I'm out in California, and I'm kind of working on a bigger project. Cool. But uh, I will be making my ma- return to the Midwest right around the start of December. You're hopefully, majestic. yeah, long anticipated. <laughs> Um, hopefully promo bot will do some more fucked up shit by then, so I can come on here and plug my stuff some more. <laughs> Yeah, there do, it for the pub. do it for the pub. <laughs> if you guys ha- at home have more robot-related news, you guys can send the articles, just the headlines. Do not send the article, just the headline to royalwecast at gmail.com or even send it to us on Twitter. That's at royalwecast. 
we really appreciate it. the more robot stuff we have you know we got our, our resident expert here so we'll, we'll have definitely have to have you on again yeah and we also gotta mention that uh this episode is brought to you by wd-40 which is god damn it robots yeah i know that's that's really yeah that makes sense i didn't even think about that yeah it, that's funny robot yeah, that's ky funny. jelly god damn it oh they wanted us you- to ask you what's the strangest thing you've ever used wd-40 for yeah the penetrating oil and water displacing spray uh with the patented smart straw i once Oh boy, I don't I don't know if I should mention this. I started a fire with WD forty one time. Not so <laughs> I guess it's I mean it's oil, yeah, I yeah, guess it's, it's, it's oil. It's, it's, I I, yeah. I just aerosoled it at some newspaper. It was terrific. Yeah. It did a Stop. great job. Stop squeaks hey. and starts fires. Stop <laughs> You got something rubbing or you want it to start flaming? No. <laughs> Number one product for handymen and arsonists. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to want us to do another one next week. <laughs> you said that we're a product for arsonists. No thank you. Yeah. No thank you, sirs. <laughs> WD w- uh, 40, tweet your complaints at Tim Ross Comedy. That's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank Kishibashi for letting us use his song Intro slash Pathos Pathos off his album 151A. Thank you, Kishibashi. I know you probably love us so much and appreciate it. Every time you hear us, you're probably like, hey, that's me. Yeah. Kishibashi, you giant musician person who doesn't totally listen to us, but maybe. Shane let us use it. Anyway, so uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, that's yep. uh, tweet us, guys, at Royal Weecast. Tweet Tim here, at Tim Ross Jokes. Good night, Dad. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> I like this is a good outro. <laughs> <laughs>